Good. Turn the choir. Left, right, back blast arrow, clear. Rocket! Hello folks, Matmus here again with you today. Hope you had a great New Year's. Welcome to 2018. Uh, we are talking today about anti-tank weapons once again. We've discussed quite a bit of Russian weaponry lately, especially guided weapons platforms. But recently I just started to look into not only my own country's anti-tank weapon systems, but others as well, and specifically the Carl Gustav comparison to the SMAW, or pretty much known as the shoulder-launched multi-purpose assault weapon. Uh, I'd be very surprised if many of you don't know what that is, but the US Marine Corps has actually been using this kind of weapon, uh, the Mark 153 specifically, since it was introduced in 1984, but don't feel bad if you are not familiar with it. It's not a very common weapons platform. You see um, the armed forces in the United States use much because for the most part, the AT-4 shoulder launched missile is taking the spotlight for the fact it is basically a disposable weapon system. However, most armed forces around the world have taken on board that this is really not the best way to go. They'd like to start using a shoulder-launched weapon system that can fire multiple projectiles without having to drop the entire tube. Of course, the S'more is still in service with the United States Marine Corps, but in today's video we're going to discuss what the United States Marine Corps are actually proposing to do. And it actually touches base with a little bit of my country, because the Carl Gustav, as we all know, is a very similar weapon system to the SMAW, because it is pretty much a shoulder launch projectile that fires a singular shot and that can be reloaded and being brought into what's called spotting on, which allows one small projectile of 308 or 7.62 caliber tracing onto the target to allow you to actually put the projectile down on target very, very effectively. Of course, we're not talking about guided weapons here, guys. Once you fire that shot, that's it. You've pretty much blew your load. Pardon the pun. Um, you really do need to be very careful of where you're placing the shot, and that's why these weapon systems are given tracer rounds to allow you to actually track and engage the target with a tracer to know that you're actually going to hit it with the sights that you've actually aimed it on, which is very, very effective. Of course, both the SMAW and the Cargo Soft have this feature, but why exactly is the US Marine Corps going towards more the Carl Gustav side of things instead of the SMAW? Well, let's discuss a little bit about it. So, the United States Marine Corps has made a very bold decision to equip every infantry squad with the Carl Gustav recoilless rifle for added range and firepower, and that's the main premise that they're trying to focus on. Further to that, officials of the United States Marine Corps are actually weighing the possibility of completely swapping out the SMAW or Shoulder Launch Multi-Purpose Assault Weapon in combat engineer squads to give troops more options for actually busting enemy bunkers, which is primarily, other than tank engagements, what these things are designed for. The Corps is planning to collaborate with the Army to purchase the M3E1 Multi-Role Anti-Armor Anti-Personnel Weapon System, or the MAAWS. A new version of the 84mm Carl Gustav made to be lighter, more compact and easier to wield. Now, the Army and the US Special Operations Command have used previous versions of the Carl Gustav concurrently for quite some time. However, for the Marine Corps, it's a fairly new weapon system, so it's going to be interesting to see how they transition from the Carl Gustav from the S'more. Of course, the S'mores is pretty dated overall. It is a bulky, very heavy piece of equipment that requires a very long projectile to be added to the end of the rocket launcher. Unlike the Carl Gustav, which actually protrudes straight into the barrel of the gun, which makes it a lot more compact, lightweight, and easier to maneuver around the battlefield. The service expects to field one of the recoil rifles per squad. The weapon will not replace any existing elements of the squad, but will function as an additive capability for any squad members to operate. Overall, the Marine Corps is pretty, pretty happy with this so far. Uh, I've been looking at some of the reviews of uh, Marines that have actually commented on the various different topics and websites, saying they actually really enjoy the recoilless rifle from the Carl Gustav capability. And that's really good news. You know, if you're going to give it to an entire branch of the armed forces, you better make sure you're getting the opinion of the Marine Corps. Teaming up with the Army will allow the Corps to purchase the MAAWS at a lot lower cost. I hate to say it guys, but as I always mention in most of my videos, the armed forces everywhere around the world is trying their best to tighten those purse strings. Even with the new administration in the United States, money is everything. If they can make a dime out of everything that they're buying, 
go the extra mile, they're going to do so. And that's what they're doing with this. They're trying to make sure they're getting their best bang for their buck, literally. Um, they expect the Corps to order around 1,200 of these weapon systems, a number roughly equivalent to the Army's planned purchase of 1,111, which is quite a random number, M3E1 rifles as well. The Army plan would contract the weapons for the fiscal year and begin fielding around 2023 or potentially sooner. The Marine Corps could jump aboard and join the contract by 2019 or 2020. The weapon systems are actually made by Saab, both as dynamics. The Carl Gustav is used by militaries of 40 different countries. Of course, most of us should know exactly what this kind of uh, weapon system is, and I will be doing a full review on it in the future. The MAAWS can fire an array of different rounds, including high explosive dual purpose round, a high explosive anti tank round, high explosive standard round and an illumination and smoke rounds. Of course, the Carl Gustav can also have a training round placed into the weapon system to allow them to fire a quite large projectile and as if they are firing the real thing. Of course, this also gives them really good practice to practice their, you know, uh, aiming on and sighting on, which is something that they have to do anyway with these weapon platforms. The SMAW, made by Nemo Tally and first entered service in 1984, fires a high explosive dual purpose round and a high explosive anti-armor round and has been used to discharge a novel explosive rocket that included a thermobaric warhead. As mentioned before, you don't really see the small very often in um, media or in the TV and such. The only real examples that I could really find of the uh, s'more actually being used was in a couple of different movies. Um, and it makes me wonder why they didn't put them in other movies themselves, but it was seen in Kick-Ass in 2010 and The A-Team in 2010, neither of which really shows off its distinctive features. Um, but it's still quite a capable weapon system today, and, you know, they're still using them in the Marine Corps, so they're not gone just yet. Uh, and the last time that these kind of rounds were used on these weapon systems was to destroy bunkers during the first and second battles of Fallujah in Iraq in 2004. The Marine Corps is the primary customer of the small, which is also used by the militaries of Lebanon and Taiwan. Some of the Corps believe that time has come to embrace the Carl Gustav, saying the small's capabilities are quite limited by comparison. In terms of capabilities, it's pretty self-explanatory, folks. It's lighter, it's a lot more compact, and when you're working with a shock force like the Marine Corps, and especially these gentlemen here as the Airborne and Rangers, they want gear that is lightweight, very compact, and able to load and reload very, very quickly. And as you can see by the Carl Gustav, it's really quite a simple process. Round goes into the back of the tube, you close the back lid, make sure it's secure, back blast clear, and off you go. Very simple, very very practical but also very good at terms of penetration values and you know uh, prevention of being seen by the enemy because it doesn't produce a huge backblast like certain other projectiles. The Marine Corps currently plans to keep the small in place as a capability for combat engineers in support of infantry units but of course infantry units will primarily be using the Carl Gustav in the future. The service's future warfighting strategy, Force 2025, includes an initiative to reduce the number of smalls in the Corps. One thing the Corps is a little nervous about is the capabilities that Carl Gustav's bunker busting capabilities with certain projectiles and they're still in their testing phases of making sure it is up to the standard of not only meeting the small's uh, weapon standards but also superseding it because at the end of the day they want to replace this thing and make sure it does a better job than the small. There's no point buying something that does the same job as the small, it's a waste of money. There have been some other key concerns from other military officials from the United States Marine Corps, including Chief Warrant Officer Christian Wade, the gunner from 2nd Marine Division in North Carolina. He said he would like to see the M3E1 fielded to light armor reconnaissance and marine recon units, as well as combat engineer battalions. Existing test data on the capabilities of the cargo staff are dated, he said, and don't take into account the powerful new rounds that have been developed for other weapon systems. Even the requirements are quite dated, he said. Documents from the 1980s call for the weapon that can destroy Soviet-era earth and timber bunkers. And at the end of the day, bunkers are now made of reinforced rebar, concrete, and even more impenetrable defenses. It's hard to really make a requirement of a particular weapons platform when we're still trying to compare it to data and to requirements from old Soviet-era type of attacks and engagements. Uh, they've not really done a side-by-side -side or apples-to-apples -apples comparison of the cargo of the small, really. Uh, you'd have to really put them both together and see which kind of choices uh, work for each kind of weapons platform, see which one's the best, and they're still working on that right now. It's not a sealed deal, you know, the, the small may still stay, and the Carl Gustav may still be in a trialing period with the Marine Corps for quite some time. 
The Smalls manufacturer maintains it has the advantage for bunker defeat. Chad Parkhill, executive vice president of Nemo Shoulder Fired Systems Business Unit, is pretty much saying that there is a side-by-side -side testing shown that the High Explosive Dual Purpose or HEDP warhead outperforms the Carl Gustav against bunkers, and at the end of the day, that is what they want to have this thing doing for the most part. For anti-tank engagements, we all know that the Javelin and the AT4s are obviously trying to tick that box. This is more for punching in, um, you know, overhead at projectiles, or really just putting a round through the slit of a bunker and annihilating it. An AT4 or a Javelin really isn't totally designed for that. A Javelin can do that capability obviously coming from a top-down attack but overall we want to be looking at something that's uh, capable of engaging bunkers up close and personal instead of from long distance if necessary because it's expensive using javelins folks it really really is in my own personal opinion I'd much rather use a javelin against a bunker than one of these things because I can engage it from absolute distance um, without having to get up close and personal by engaging uh, with a recoilless rifle type setup According to certain weapon specs, the small also weighs 29.5 pounds loaded. The M3E1, which knocks out about 6 pounds off the weight of its predecessor, weighs about 32 pounds loaded. So, you know, at the end of the day, it's it's not that much um, more advantageous than the Carl Gustav. However, we're looking at projectiles that are being upgraded since the previous uh, models of the small weapon system, so it's hard to really compare something that's old to new. However, the MAAWS promises Marines an array of powerful new rounds, including some still in current development, that match or exceed the SMAW that has to offer. The MAAWS, unlike the small, has smoke and illumination rounds, and several of its rounds boast an effective range well over 1,000 meters, where the small maxes out an effective range of 500 meters, which really is not that effective if you're trying to engage targets from some distance. The high explosive dual purpose round for the Carl Gustav could shoot in an excess of 1,000 meters, where the small can only shoot around about 200 to 300 meters effectively. The most important thing that you could really say to a Marine about the Carl Gustav and the small is that putting the Carl Gustav in his hand could have devastating effects on the enemy, not only outside AK range, but also outside PKM range, which is just around 1,000 meters. The Kalashnikov PKM, an enemy weapon system of Afghanistan and Iraq, has an effective range of 7 to 1,000 meters, and if you're able to engage a firing position up to those distances, it's a no-brainer for infantry dismounts that are going in to engage those positions. Including training and practice rounds, there are some 50 different munitions that the MAAWS can fire, and there are even more in development, including an 84mm laser guided projectile that can be fired from these recoilless rifles. And there are so many other rounds that the Carl Gustavs have not actually been tested through yet. Overall, folks, I see this as a really good sign for the Marine Corps and militaries around the world. I will always side with guided missiles to engage tanks. It's just kind of a no-brainer, but if it comes down to it, we do need to engage targets up close and personal. This is definitely something I think we need to look into. I respect the Carl Gustav for the fact that it's been in service for so long, is still punching rounds down range very effectively, and being developed to be more lightweight, more effective, more powerful projectiles. The small, not so much. You know, they're trying to, but to me, the small looks very, very awkward to use. I've never really obviously used one. I've not been in the United States military, uh, but it does look very cumbersome, very very long, very heavy. Um, I have heard good things about its um, tracer round capability. It has a, a magazine that can fire out five or six rounds to allow you to put that projectile on target first time um, without wasting, you know, your main projectile, which is good. But the Carl Gustav has this same capability, so it's it's a up and down. I'm not too sure, you know, is it something that is really a key attribute to, to saying that the Carl Gustav isn't applicable for future use. I honestly hope that the Cargo Stoff does go into full use of the United States Marine Corps. If you are a Marine and have used the small or the Cargo Stoff, or if you're in any branch of the armed forces around the world, let me know what you think about each of these platforms, and I'd love to hear your opinion on the core... Um, actually trying to adapt these in the United States. So let me know. Um, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Please leave me a like and uh, if you want to follow my channel um, outside of my videos then come chat with me on my Discord channel. The link is in the description box below. If you would like to support my channel and my future endeavors please go check out my Patreon account for any donations that you're willing to make and thank you in advance. I hope you all have a wonderful day and bye bye.